Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So I have a special guest, the lovely Christina from Christina Gold. So make sure you go ahead and check out her lovely channel. And uh, yeah, so she's going to go ahead and give us a brief story <laughs> about uh, the toxic relationship that she was in. And I'm going to interject from time to time, ask her some questions. And we, you know what, just go ahead and get your cheese and crackers and wine because she about to spill this tea. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so enjoy. All right. So uh, where do I begin? Okay. Let me just begin by when I met this man. I met him. I was at, um, Neil Soul Tuesdays, which is like a popular thing here in San Diego. And um, I don't know. And he was just tall. He was dark. He was handsome. And he had swag. Yeah, know? yeah. He had swag. <laughs> so, I don't know. I saw him. And he was dancing. And then we just locked eyes. And then, boom, we just happened from there. So, a little bit along the way, it just I started noticing these red flags. Like, he wouldn't answer my phone calls mm -hmm. or... He would start smelling like, you know, other women, and it would just... Fragrance, I'm assuming. Yeah, fragrance. Okay, okay. Other women, and it was just, it was just really, like, weird things, and he had a roommate at the time, so he would have, like, women over, and I'm like, oh, well, who are these women, and then he would just claim that the women were the friends, or whatever, or the roommates, so I'm just like, okay. And then he just become, like, really manipulative, basically saying... Giving me a lot of ultimatums, saying that either do this or this is going to happen, do that or that's going to happen. Mind you, he's older than me. But that's besides the point. But he just became really manipulative and really controlling and to the point where I would go out with like a group of people and he would be like, well, why are you going with them? Um, why can't I go? Whatever. But when he goes out with his friends to play soccer, because this man's African, he goes to play soccer, and they watch soccer, and it's a whole bunch of them. They have booty stuff. <laughs> he will not invite me. Oh. He, yeah. He, went, he won't invite me. And he claims that I can't come because his friends like me. Whatever. Like me in that way, or try to pursue me in that way. One of his friends did try to pursue me in that way, but that's only one of them. Like, why can't I hang out with you and your friends, but yet you're complaining I'm going out and hanging out with my friends. <laughs> But you're also still a grown woman and you're able to make your own choices. So even if all of his friends decided to come on to her in that mm -hmm. way, she has a right to say, uh, no, I'm with your boy. Right. Right. So you have your own way of telling people to back away. Right. And my thing is, he should have basically checked them. Mm -hmm. Like, they're the ones coming to me. That's Why true. am I getting punished for sure. their, <laughs> you know, not being loyal to you? I. And why is he hanging around those type of guys? If he right. wants to be in a relationship, then you have to hang around more relationship-minded people. Mm -hmm. So if you know the type of friends that you have, then... Birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. And I should have... Was that a red flag? <laughs> that was a red flag, yeah. Yeah, okay. I should have, like, peeped that earlier, but I guess I didn't. But anyways, um, it just really became to the point where he wanted to have children, and I wasn't ready to have children, and... His son would come down here for the summertime, and him, his son and my daughter got really close to the point where, you know, they were calling each other brother and sister. Okay. My daughter was probably like two at the time. His son was like five or something like that. Five or four or something like that. Some little, like a little gap between them. Okay. So, I mean, for a while, it was good, but the thing about it, the bad times weighed out the good times. Mm. There was only, the good times were sparing me. So it could be really good. We'd be on this really good patch. We would go out like here and there with the kids or we'll go out to eat or he'll just do something that like he'll treat me like really good one day and we'll go out and then he'll come run my, my feet mm -hmm. and then run me a bath, all that good stuff. Okay. But then it was just like, er, when it was bad, it was really bad. Like, oh, I don't want to be bothered. Oh, you're always nagging me. Oh, you're always this. I'm like, okay, I might be a little bit of a nagger. But I'm only nagging you because you're not doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Like, you're doing the bare minimum and thinking that you can keep me around by doing the bare minimum. Like, texting me, like, hey. And then that's all I get for, like, a week. A week? A no. week. No, 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 no. Not for a week. A week. And also, let me just interject and say that that is a sign of a toxic relationship right there with the highs and the lows. The extreme highs, the extreme mm -hmm. lows. So that's definitely a sign of a toxic relationship as well. Yeah. 
So, but the weak part, he tried to justify it because he was in Japan and he was trying to say that he didn't get any service and blah, 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 blah. But my thing is... Was that a pattern, though, of his? What? Like, basically disappearing for a period of time and then coming back around. Was well, that his thing was he didn't have... No, it kind of wasn't a pattern because before, when he was leaving... He would bug me and say, oh, since now I'm gone, you're busy, and I see that you're preoccupied, so you can't talk to me, yada, yada, yada. But my thing is, I didn't like talking to him and then not getting a response until way later because mm -hmm. he supposedly doesn't have service mm -hmm. or whatever. So I just stopped responding to him altogether. And his thing, he gave me an ultimatum before he was going to Japan saying that we didn't go with him. Like, me and my daughter didn't go with him. Okay. Then he was going to break up with me. So I'm like, okay, bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> And then, um, the first time that we ever broke up, though, and I should have kept it at the first time that I ever broke up with him, I saw his phone, and in his phone, it was some girl trying to invite him to go, like, take a shower with her. And I was just like, wait, what? Did he respond back? No, there was no response, but okay. still. But her name was still programmed in the phone. It right, was just right, the number. right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, it's nothing wrong. You could call the girl. I called the girl, but the girl sided with him. So I'm just like, whatever. You wouldn't be texting him that. You know, he probably was like on the low. She oh, sided with him. What, what does that mean she sided with him? Saying that nothing, nothing's going on between us. But I was if like, but was you, going... you met him in the shower. She was like, oh, no, but, you know, we just joke like that. Just, just basically she was just lying because she couldn't really think of, because we're on the phone. We're not mm -hmm. texting. Mm -hmm. She was, couldn't even think of what to say, and I was like, whatever, I hung up on her. And then I was just like, I'm still done with you. Like, six, seven months go by, I think, and I'm on the way to work on the trolley. Man, I wish this man did not have this other... <laughs> this man, some random man had this man's cologne on, and when he passed by me, I was like... Like, I'm like, dang, I just thought about him because I missed his cologne, I missed everything. And the thing about it is, I don't think I necessarily missed him, I just missed the thought of having a man. Mmm, okay, alright. Okay. Now that I, I see in full circle, I'm like, mmm, I don't think I missed him, I think I just missed having a man. Because I was in a single state, my daughter's father had just passed away, um, like a year prior, and I just felt, it just felt good to have, like, somebody there. And it didn't necessarily matter who it, it was a body he was he, right. was he was kind of a placeholder right right, right. Like, okay a body holder a placeholder somebody that's right. warm mm -hmm. okay so i ended up calling him and then here goes the toxicity now this is two this is the second time second time. okay all right second time so it's just off and on off and on for years like about five years and then until finally he comes back from japan he comes back from japan and then he wants to work it out so i'm just like why? Like, why do you want to work it out when, before you went to Japan, you basically gave me an ultimatum. And he's like, no, I you know I really love you. I want to work it out. Can we just even work it out? Fine. Okay. I'm not dating anyone at this, at this point because for me, I don't really date, like, a lot. Like, I don't really put myself out there. I more so keep to myself and focus on my daughter because I feel like I don't want to just bring random men in and out of her life mm -hmm. if I know... I'm not at the point where I want to get serious with somebody or, like, really start all over with somebody new. That was my whole thing. Like, like getting to know somebody right. new. Okay. I mean, still to this point now, like, I'm single now. I'm like, I really don't want to start all over. I don't really want to wait to see when it's appropriate to burp, fart, when take my wig off. Like, <laughs> I don't want to wait until we can get comfortable enough to do that. I just want to be me. How you long know? do you think you have to wait to do all of that stuff? Child, I don't know, because when I get in a relationship, I am waiting. Boom. You see everything. <laughs> I ain't waiting. I'll scare you off. If that's the scary off moment for me anyway. But I'm just saying, like, the awkwardness. And not necessarily from me. Like, from the other party, too. Mm -hmm. Because you could be just all open and nonchalant and all comfortable and stuff. But the other person might be uncomfortable around you. And they might feel like they can't open up to you. Okay. I don't want to have to, like, go through that whole... The motions. But that's until, a part of getting to know, though. I know. It's a part of the process. You're not going to get into this very comfortable state right away. It really is an unfolding. It's a process. It's a. It's an onion that you're peeling back layer by layer, so they can really see you, and you can see them. Well, they're gonna see me up front <laughs> because I ain't holding back because I don't have time to waste time. I feel like that. That some of that it could be like time wasting. 
Unless, like, somebody shows up to you, this is me, da 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 okay, I don't like it, bye. That's a whole lot, though. Because that that's a whole lot in the very beginning to thrust all of this, this is me, <laughs> onto a person because you never know what little thing can scare somebody out. So if okay, you, bye. if you feed, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you feed it to them piece by piece, then they have a better chance of really seeing who the real Christina is. Yeah. Well, just piece by piece. Front. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not just like like you were saying, taking off your wig and everything. Not just that. It's like the entire you. The the burp and the farting, all of the natural things that are going to come out. Some people really do hide that as if, as if it never happens. Or some people may even go to sleep with the makeup on. Or make sure that they wake up early so you can see the beautiful uh, face, full face makeup. They'll go to the restroom. I've actually heard this before. They'll go to the restroom and put on full face and then try to uh, nudge the husband or boyfriend or whatever. Some husbands have never seen their wives without makeup before. Ooh, so, yeah. So, so there are extremes that people will go through in order to try to keep somebody but if you feed it to them piece by piece then they'll have a better understanding of who you are because let's be real <laughs> i'm not the finest but i'm not the ugliest and what i mean by this is i've seen some hideous women on these youtube channels that do the makeup but when they put on that makeup they are flawless but when mm -hmm. i see them in the beginning i'm like whoa i've seen it too <laughs> i've seen it too like this is what i have on my face right now this was like a fail right here I usually don't even wear makeup. You can see my it's other videos, <laughs> and you'll see that I don't have makeup on. But you were absolutely right. Uh, some of these women, the I'm point, scared. But the I'm point scared. is, they're married. Did you hear what I said? They're married, though. So they fed it to, I'm assuming, right? I don't know these women, but I'm assuming that they would feed who they truly are bit by bit to their potential spouse and then they're loving exactly who they are and that's what they fall in love with so them walking around the house without makeup or feeling super comfortable enough to even spread it to the world and you're not the cutest right and then by the time you put on this makeup you beat <laughs> yeah yes. <laughs> but still um anyway go ahead go ahead okay so um i wish he would have did that i wish he would have Fed it to me all at once, and I could have been like, uh, no, taking a step back. But you know, the thing about it is a manipulator is not gonna feed it to you all at one time, right? That's true. Um, the thing about it is, like, when I think about like our relationship, I just think it was like a big tug of war. Like, when I wanted him, he didn't want me, when he wanted me, I was just over him because it was like, you want me now that I'm gone. That mm -hmm. you said initially, when I wanted you at the time that I wanted you. You rejected me. That's pretty much what it was. And, and when you rejected me, I was just like, okay, I'm out. You know? And then when I'm like, I'm out, and you're realizing, like, I'm not playing your game, you want to get me back. Mm -hmm. And then when I don't really respond, you go through all these great lengths and, like, do these grand gestures to get me back. And then, yes, it works because you get me back. But then when I'm back into it, it's the same thing all over again. Mm -hmm. It repeats itself. It's a cycle. And it repeated itself for a long time. And recently, like, um, recently, I wasn't talking to him at all. I had a play coming up, and the play was down the street from his house. And he saw my car, and he called me. He was like, hey, you know, I want you to come to my house. I said, no, I have my daughter with me. And he was like, well, um, just bring her with you. And I'm just like, okay. So I ended up bringing her with me, and his mom was there. And I didn't even know it was his mom to begin with. I thought it was just some, who knows? He always had some, he is like not a party person, but he's really family oriented. Okay. So he has a lot of family at his house all the time. So I'm thinking, it was normal. So we walk in and then my daughter, obviously my daughter is always in everybody's face. Hey, hi. Mm -mm. Can you put some music on? They have some African music on my baby. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, she always feels right at home. So I'm just like, okay, whatever, let her do her thing. And he's like, oh, hey, I want you to meet someone. So I get to my grandma, and I'm like, oh, hi. And she's like, do I look like a grandma to you? And I'm like, uh, no, I don't know what you want me to say. She's like, I'm his mom. That's my son. That's my son. I'm like, I wanted to beat this. 
I wanted to beat the black off this man. <laughs> and he's chocolate, okay? So that have been a lot of beating. Like, I really wanted to, like, I'm like, why would you blindside me yeah. and bring me to your house or invite me to your house where your mom's at? So then is mom going to say, oh, you have a ghost following you. Basically, she said that my daughter's father is following me and my daughter, and he's not going to allow us to be happy. Or not us, because me to be happy with any other man because he is jealous and he is in love with me. The ghost is in love with me. <laughs> so the mom said the only way that I can ever be happy with any man is for her to remove the ghost um, like away from me, or from stop following me. Wait, let me. His mom, the only way that you're going to be happy is if the guy's mom removes the ghost. Right. And mind you, okay. it's not free. She want me to pay her to remove the ghost. So I'm like, hold up. So I didn't ask you to do no reading on me. So you mean to tell me a ghost is following me and I got to pay you to get rid of mm -hmm. said ghost mm -hmm. that's following me? Mm -hmm. I don't think so, boo, boo. So I was like, I lied. Um, the next day I went and I was like, uh, I went, um, I think it was like about two days or something like that. And I said I went to go see an old show. Okay. Mm -hmm. So old show is like uh, mm -hmm. something they practice in Santeria and old show is like a, like a warrior or somebody who protects you. And I was like, um, I went to go see an old show and you know, the ghost is gone. And then he was like, oh, okay. So he gonna try to give me money to go see his mom. Like he's gonna give me his money to go see his mom. Then he went inside to give the money to his mom. His mom said that she went to see me. And then the mom tells him that I'm lying. I didn't go see an Oshon, which, which I was lying. <laughs> she, she, um, <laughs> she said, I didn't go see an Oshon. And why did I come to test her and um, lie, pretty much? Okay. And then he came outside and he was like, I can't talk to you or see you again and leave me alone. Da, 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 da. And I was just so emotional. I broke down in tears right in front of his house. And all he did was shut the garage door. Shut his garage door and went inside. He didn't care about me crying. I was like, boo-hoo crying. Like, I couldn't even drive. I was in his driveway. 30 minutes crying. He didn't even care. He didn't even come to check on me. Nothing. And then when I finally got done crying, I went to ring the doorbell. And he was like, he didn't even answer the doorbell. He There's like a screen thing. He was just like, um, I can't do this with you anymore. And I was just like, okay. So after that, I went home and I got over this man. I'm like, I was just like, I'm done with this man. I'm not going to talk to him anymore. Like, this is it. How did you get over him? Um, honestly, I don't even know. I think it was just basically him not contacting me, me not contacting him. Mm -hmm. I put his name under, like, manipulator, confusion, and logical in my phone. So every time I saw his number, I'd just be like, okay, this is it. This is it. But the thing about him in the past, when I, went, when I stopped talking to him, he would, like, contact me. Any way that he could. If I blocked his phone number, he would contact me from a friend's phone number, email, Instagram, Facebook, all that. So, it was like two weeks after, and he contacted me on, on Instagram. This long thing talking about, how dare you come to test my mom, and you came and you was crying, and da 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 Don't blame her, it's your fault, blah, blah, blah. And I told him to leave me alone. I blocked it. Come from his business account. da 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 da, -da. Oh, you're wow. never going to be happy, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Block that. Come on my um my text message. Oh, see, you messed up. You messed up. See that we can never be together. Stop moving and go settle down with your ghost. I just ignored him. And then I'm just like, okay. I'm just, I just can't do this anymore with this man. Mm -hmm. Like, I just can't. So he stopped with every other outlet, even the text messages. Okay. So after the text messages were over, I'm just like, Thank you. He's done. Like, he's finally done. Like, he's finally not bothering me. Easter rolls around. And this, this Easter rolls around. He's going to say Happy Easter. I'm like, uh, here uh, we 2018 go. Easter? Yeah. 2018 Easter okay. rolls around. <laughs> and um, I'm like, uh, here we go again. He's going to say Happy Easter. Okay, whatever. I didn't respond back. And then he's going to say, after that, he sends me, um, a gif and it's from black panther and it's when a guy is like in back of another guy with a gun and i'm just like 
or T'Challa. A white guy is in the back of T'Challa with a gun. And I'm just like, why would you send me this? You said happy Easter, I didn't say nothing to you. Why would you send me this and we're not even talking? Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I just, I just ignored it until it started bothering me. And I'm like, is he threatening me? So I respond and I'm like, is that a threat? And then he was like, I'm going to see you. I didn't say anything back. And then he's like, I miss you. And I said, you think I'm stupid? You made your bed, now lay in it. Leave me alone. And then he just he just keeps going. After after I said, you made your bed, lay in it, leave me alone, I didn't talk to him. Next day, he was like, CC. Next day, he was like, Christina. Next day, he was like, please, I want to talk to you. Next day, he was like, oh, wow. when can I see you? The next day, he's going to say, why are, you, why are you ignoring me? And the next day, he was like, why are you being like this? Please stop. And the next day, he's like, Christina, he's like, I want to see you. When can I meet you? Can we go out to eat? I just let this man continue to talk to himself. Day after day after day after day after day. And today, today, April 15th, he's like, um, after all that, he's like, please don't contact me ever again. <laughs> please don't ever try to work anything out with me. I'm done with you since you want to act like this. You want to get back to me, get back with me when it's, um, when it works for you or something like that, he said. But when I try, it's like, forget that. He's like, leave me alone. Thank you. All the same. And I'm not thinking like. This man really wants a reaction from me. But he's saying that he's saying all of this after he's the one who's been contacting you. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to make sure I understood it. Yes. So this man is the one who always reaches out to me. Always every time it happens like this, it's him reaching out. With it's the exception him. of that one time, with right? The cologne. Right. With cologne. So okay. the one time I reached out back to him was the cologne time. That was it. Everything else, it's him. Oh, I'm going to be back in your life. I'm going to be back in your, back, your life. After your mom told you to leave me alone, listen to your mama, please. You was a mama's boy. Listen to her. She said, leave me alone because there's a ghost on of me. So leave me alone and go ruin someone else's life, okay? Because you tried to do it with me and it didn't work. Well, don't sound like he's scared of the ghost. You know, for it to be a ghost following you, you're not going to be happy. Mm -hmm. Which means that even if he comes into your life, you're not going to be happy with him. So that's not scaring him enough for him to stay away right but initially he said that was the reason why he went away mm -hmm. that was the reason why um he allowed me to cry in his, in front of his house and mind you he said i couldn't even come in his house because his mom said i couldn't come in his house i'm like you a grown man this is your house and you said i can't come in your house because your mom okay like i didn't even do nothing to your mom your mom was the one coming over to me talking about ghosts and stuff and this and that. Like, I all I said was, hi to your mom. She didn't like me. She didn't have to make up a whole story about a ghost. <laughs> like, she could have just said, I don't like her. And did I would have been like, ooh, bye. Did you believe her about the ghost at all? Or not at all? Um, to be honest, I think there may be a little truth to it. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think the ghost or her dad's following me. I do believe that her dad is watching after her, but... To be after me? Why? Why would you be after me? Like, you have a whole other child in another state, like, by another woman. Mm. Like, her dad. Her dad does. So, it was like, why would he waste all the time following us when, you know, he has a child over there that he could be watching that? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yes, her father is dead. Um, I'm not sure if, I don't know how the Oscar world works. I don't know if he is Roman here on, on Earth. I don't know if he... Is resting like we nobody knows until, until you die. You can't even come back because <laughs> when you die, like why would God give you the opportunity to die and come back and then tell people like no, nobody knows. Like if you die, you die. You ain't coming back to tell the story. That's it. <laughs> That's why with these seven minutes in heaven, all this I don't believe none of that stuff. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well tell us what you really think. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I, I believe it to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, she would have said, if Ghost is following my daughter, I'm like, I, I don't know. What's new? But when you try to say me and then try to, like, make it seem like I'm never going to be happy unless you get rid of the ghost, my thing is I feel like she was trying. If there really is, if her dad really is following me and my daughter, I feel like the only reason he would be doing it is to protect us. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, like, he's protecting us from them. Because why would you want to get rid of him? Like, you want to get rid of him so you could do whatever you want to me so I can, like,
be happy with your son, which is what your son is saying. So are you trying to put a spell on me so I can be with your son, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. foolishly, mm -hmm. like, or what? And you can't do it because he's in the way and he's protecting me. So once you get rid of him, I have no protection anymore. Like, no. If I got someone on the other side protecting me other than my Jesus and God, then I'll take it. I take it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I take it too. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I, I don't know. And I just really don't. I don't get the man. And I, part of me feels sorry for him because I'm like, when you had me, you didn't appreciate me. Mm -hmm. And now that you don't have me, you want to fight with everything you have to get me back. But you're just trying to get me back so you can place me in the same spot that I left. Okay, so do you think that he... Is trying to get you back so things could be different, so you guys can actually build a life together. Mm -hmm. You still think that he's trying to be manipulative? Um, if he was really trying to get me back to where um, he wanted to build a life with me and really wanted to turn things around, then he would... I think that he would present it differently. I think he would okay. say, hey, can we meet at this place so we can get couples therapy or... Um, speak to someone about our relationship or try to see where the disconnect is mm -hmm. or try to see if we can, you know, um, if I can speak your language in love and you can speak mine, mm -hmm. then I would be like, okay, but this is the same patterns. The same pattern is he tries to get me back with all these different things like going out to eat, take me here, take me there, offering to take me on vacations and thing, things of that nature. Just to put me back in the space to where he just neglects me. Oh, I see. Okay. And I'm just like, I am not. I don't care what I tolerated before from anybody. I'm not tolerating that stuff no more. I feel like I'm about to be 30 years old. 30 years old is going to be my prime. Like, I feel like I'm just about to blow up. I feel like every, all insecurities, all doubts, all fears and stuff mm -hmm. have been, like, squashed. Mm -hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. in my 20s. It was really an eye-opener, and that's why I say to, like, young women, don't feel like if you don't know who you are in your 20s that, you know, you should be ashamed. I feel like in your 20s, you really learn who you are as a woman, mm -hmm. and I feel like, for me, all the things that I wanted to do when I was 20, the reason why God didn't allow me to do them because I was so insecure, okay. like, I had low self-esteem, mm -hmm. like, I, um, I would second-guess myself, like, I knew I could do certain things. But I would just be like, no, nah, I'm not going to do this because X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. and what if somebody judges me and stuff okay. like that? Now, I don't care, okay? I, I don't care what people think about me. I don't care if they talk about me. I don't care if they think my, whatever the case may be. Like, I'm, like, really secure in myself. And I tested it, and it's, like, foolproof now. So I just were like, hey. And part of me wishes I was like this earlier, but I'm like, I'm still my prime. Like, I don't look young. I mean, I don't look old. So, I'm like, I'm pretty sure when I get 40, I still won't look old. Yes, so honey. <laughs> black don't crack. So, it's never too late. And I feel like this is the perfect time for me to really set the standard mm -hmm. and raise the bar back high. Mm -hmm. Because it was high. It was high um, with my, mom, I mean, my daughter's father. It was very high. Like, he set that bar high. But for some reason, I let this man come in. And he, the bar was high at first, but then he just started getting a little bit too comfortable and, like, testing me to see what he could do. And each time that I came back to him, his respect for me just started. It was lower and lower, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it decreased. Yeah, because, because he felt like he didn't really want to do Well, uh, yes, but also because you was kind of allowing it, too. He was allowing it, too. And you actually mentioned um, your insecurities. So that was taking a part into why you were still dealing with him. You wanted a warm body there. You didn't necessarily miss him. It was the warm body. And then, um, like you said, you were single, so nobody else was, like, trying to take your attention. Mm -hmm. Nobody else was trying to capture your attention, so you were just like, okay, well, I'll deal with him today because I'm not dating anybody. That's right? True. Yeah. I think that was, like, the bad thing as well. I think, for me, I always allow men to choose me. And whoever chooses me and pursues me like the strongest or goes the hardest for me, that's who I end up with. And that's not a good way to mm -hmm. date. Mm -hmm. Ladies, choose them too. Like, even if they choose yes. you, 
and they're like rocking hard for you and they show you that they love you and they care, if they're not for you and you're not feeling them, just be like, bye. Because. Yeah, you have to choose them. Yeah. You have to choose them back. So it really has to be you guys are choosing each other. But in the, especially in the very beginning, we as the women, we actually have the power to choose mm -hmm. the men. Uh, the man is really supposed to show you exactly who he is. He's supposed to prove himself. Now, I'm not saying that the woman doesn't prove herself, but the man in the very beginning has to prove himself to you. He's supposed to be the one that is absolutely chasing you. He's supposed to be the one making all of the dates. And I'm not saying every single one, but especially on. in the beginning, mm -hmm. especially in the beginning, he's really supposed to show you that he could provide for you if need be. If he needs to take on you and your daughter, then he should be able to provide, right? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. When you have children, and that's just a side note. If the guy that you are with decides to only love you and not your child, that is not the man for you because y'all a package deal. And once you start to separate your child from the man, issues come into play. And I don't know if y'all seen that story recently where, um, very sad story, but it was a black couple and um, the dad, the, the, the baby's dad, I kind of hate to say that, but he wanted the child custody and the mom well, didn't want to give away the custody for whatever reason, but she was abusing the child, which was the whole reason why the father wanted to keep his child. Long story short, she ended up getting with the guy who didn't like her daughter and the boy, the boy ended up murdering the little girl. She was like three years old. And literally, this just happened. It was all in the news. Um, but anyway, yeah, so if they if they do not like your children, that is a super red flag. So, yes, that was just a side note. Package deal has nothing to do with our story. But you have to know that the person that you get in, in intertwined into your relationship has to, it has to like your children. It has to like your children. They have to like children in general. And forget the attitudes that the children are going to bring. Anyway, I'm going to go off on a tangent. But... Just know that they have to like you, like and really love your children. They do. I totally agree with that. And that's another reason why it was difficult to really just break off the relationship mm -hmm. with him was because he created like a solid like um, male figure for my daughter. Oh, I so see. my daughter was two. Mm -hmm. So they were really close, like super close to the point like she would just think of him like as her father. So when he would come into the room, like she would light up and run and jump into his arms and he would pick her up and spin her around. Aww. And it was just like, that was his daughter. Like he never once, like, that was the one thing I liked about him. Like when I met him and he found out I had a daughter and then the first time that they met, which was like at the park, that was the one thing because he immediately was like, dad, because he was already a dad. He mm -hmm. already has a son. Okay. So he was immediately like, okay, daddy mode. And like. It wasn't to the point where he was just fun, fun, fun. Like, he disciplined her, too. Okay. And I allowed it because mm -hmm. I'm just like, hey, if you're going to be around, like, we're here. It takes a village to raise a child. Does, and she does. needs that male figure. It's like, she, he wouldn't spank her or anything, but he'd be like, do this. And she, okay. Good, good. But when I was doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, when he you're, said you're that, the fun it was parent. like, I'm not, I'm not even the fun one. <laughs> I'm the mean one. But for some reason, she's like, oh, but now when I say do something, she should like test me, and I'm like, and she's like, okay, just gotta get the look. Spank them one good time. <laughs> they know the look. Kids one know the look. One good time. All you need is one good spanking. <laughs> like uh, parents nowadays, don't spank your kids. Ever. One good one. That's all you need. One good spanking. And don't make it too crazy to where they got bruises and stuff. No, one good spanking. That's all they need, and all you gotta do is give them the look. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. I so love I want to ask you some questions. All right. All right. Let's get down right. to it. <laughs> now I'm back to my crazy little story. And it literally just wrapped today. Today. I mean, it's still going. This is a never ending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to take help freezing over for it to go anywhere. So I'm, I'm really done. So for me, I just want to ask, like, what could I have done to like not put myself in that position to get into a toxic relationship in the beginning. Well, so so you already mentioned it, and I kind of mentioned it a little bit, but um, as far as you making sure that 
you are in a more secure and sound space as far as your insecurities because usually we get into these toxic relationships when we don't really know who we are. We're feeling very insecure about whatever. It could be a plethora of things. It could just be one thing that's really just weighing heavy on us. So you had mentioned about your insecurities and he kind of came in at the right time. Then you weren't dating anybody. Basically, you didn't really, um, you did not fully accept who you were as a woman. And so because you didn't really know who you were, what you wanted, needed, and desired, then he was able to come in. That's true. He was able just to come in. So I felt like during that time, I also like just got over like a grief. I was like still kind of grieving for okay. my dad. Okay. So do you think that played a part in it as well? I do. Yeah, I think that it played a part in it because you had the, the male figure. I'm assuming that you love your, your child's father. Mm -hmm. and, and then that was just kind of just taken away from you abruptly. Right. right. And so then he decided to come in. You mentioned that he was pretty much a good male figure to her. He, pretty, he, he bonded with her really good. And he made you feel good, especially in the beginning. It didn't go downhill until it doesn't sound like it what started to really go down here until you guys started breaking up and then get back together and mm -hmm. then it would go downhill and then get back together and downhill even more. So, um, yeah, I definitely think that it played a part in it. Do you believe because I didn't have sex with this man until a year and a half? Do you think that played a role into the reason why he was trying to seek it elsewhere or maybe did or didn't? I don't know. Wait, wait, ask me that again. So I didn't have sex with him for a year and a half. Okay. Like a year and a half. Wait, wait, you guys boyfriend, girlfriend? Or Yeah. Okay. So I made him wait. Mm-hmm. Anyway, okay. So a year and a half. Mm hmm How long were you um were you guys intimate, like kissing and all of this, touching and stuff? See, and okay. that's another thing. I didn't want to kiss him. I only liked to hug him. And he did that for a year and a half. Ooh, honey. Okay. Oh, wait, don't okay. think that he wasn't complaining. Oh, he was okay. complaining to everybody <laughs> and their mama, anybody who would listen. And everybody like, I want to be with a woman who wasn't sexually intimate with me. Okay, so so now what's the question? I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. You're <laughs> yeah, not you heard it honey. Sheesh. Okay, so you, keep going. Do you believe that, that that is where the reason why he started acting the way he did? I'm sure it played a part in it, but is it... I'm sure that it played a part in it, but at the end of the day, he was still choosing to be here. He could have walked away at any moment, like a year and a half. Men complain about 90 days, so a year and a half. So Don't think that he wasn't getting it elsewhere. I ain't stupid. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying everything is a choice. So he's choosing to stay here. Then he really can't complain. He really he shouldn't have been complaining about it because it was his choice to stick around. And you were obviously saying no, no, no. You meant no, and you obviously showed no. <laughs> so I I think that if he really wanted to go elsewhere it was something it was nothing that you could have done really he really should have just broken it off or I mean you know most most men are not going to come to you and say hey I'm going to sleep over here or if they say it they still don't really do it like that they usually go off and sneak so whether he was sneaking I mean, or not do you know for sure? <laughs> well, from the text message on his phone, talk about joining me in the shower. Oh, this was during that period. Yeah, that was during that period. Right? Ah, okay, okay, yeah. Or, mm -hmm. or, you know, just to play devil's advocate, he really could have not done that. Uh, uh, gone to the shower or even had sex with her. Maybe she just really wanted to for whatever reason and he was shutting it down. And, um, you know, you don't believe that he was shutting it down. <laughs> So, this so the man we're talking about. Like, no, but, but turn it down free. But I also think that we have these women out here who will do kind of any and everything, especially if they uh, perceive him as being a good guy. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, I want that good guy. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do what I want to do or try to get you over here. So maybe he really wasn't doing it with her. Let's say with her, because he didn't even answer the text message. That was what you said, right? He didn't even answer it. So. Maybe he did answer and he deleted his, <laughs> what That's his a theme. possibility, too. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, he should... He. The thing about it is, it wasn't like he purposely left his stuff out. He left it on accident, so I happened to be like, oh. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. I see. So, um, outside of that, I'm just really... I don't want to attract the same type of man, but I don't, I don't think I will, to be honest. But what do you think these men look for in a woman? 
like like like, him. like in a woman to like um pursue because there's certain men out there who look for women just to try to control mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. so so a lot of it has to do with um where you're at so um they can kind of so manipulators let's just go with manipulators they absolutely manipulate. know who they can manipulate and it's, it's, it's something in their wording and maybe they're watching you um like they'll they'll test you doing certain things to see what he can get away with and each time he's testing the waters is getting for he's going further and further like pushing the envelope a little bit further does that make sense mm -hmm. so with with him pressing the envelope he's just testing to see if he can do it with you and it's not Sometimes they can kind of look at the woman because sometimes the way you're dressing, the way you're putting yourself out there can really show that you have some low self-esteem and I can I can get over on you mm -hmm. in that aspect. But that's not always the case. So a lot of times with manipulators, not just men, but manipulators, period, they will test the waters to see what they can get away with. And if they see that they can't get away with it from you, they'll just move on and choose another victim. Right. Um. Yeah, I think that's... I think that's the thing about it like he's so used to like manipulating me and getting me back so now that he's seeing that it's not working he's getting frustrated well how long has it been this time this time what do you mean since the last time i talked to him well well the last time you guys were dating or whatever it was um the last time we had tried to even work anything out was i wouldn't say december december was the time where i i saw his wait was it december well, it was December or January when I saw his mom, but it wasn't like we were trying to work anything out. It was more so like, hey, can you come over? Okay. And then that happened to where we didn't even work anything out. So prior to that, it was June of last year. Oh, so almost a year now. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, almost a year now. And it's so funny because if you ask him to, like, say his side of the story, it'd be totally different. I'm sure it would. It would be, like, totally, like, just... The blame would all be on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I would. so I have a question for you then. What role or what part do you think that you actually played in this toxic relationship? Mm. Um I would say I wouldn't I don't want to say that me holding off on sex. That was just my whole personal thing because I was still grieving from her my daughter's father passing away and I was just going through a lot and to be honest, I don't. I didn't really enjoy sex. Then mm -hmm. I do now. <laughs> <laughs> let's just TMI, put that out there. <laughs> TMI, let, let, let's just let's just put that out there. Um, but I think it's, I was nagging. Um, and I think that's it. To be honest, I was nagging. I felt like if you all seen Acrimony, I felt like Acrimony, the the lady from Acrimony. Oh, I haven't seen. Like yet. Okay. I was strong when he needed me to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I played dumb when he needed me to be. Actually, no, I'm lying. I didn't play dumb. <laughs> you had to rethink that. Yeah, I had to rethink that. I didn't play dumb. I just let him lead mm -hmm. when he wanted to lead. Um, but I never, like... And I think that, that that was a thing with him. The thing with him initially is he's African, he's Ghanaian, he comes from a background where he believes a woman should be seen and not heard, stay in your place, let the man... Mm. be the man mm -hmm. but with me i'm more like mm, like i'm here like i'm used to being the head of the household i'm used to running everything i'm used to handling all the church i'm used to doing everything so when i come into this relationship with him and the dynamic is he wants to be the head but i'm just like no i'm still opinionated i have my this my that if we clashed a lot because he would be like well why won't you just let me take care of this and let me lead and let me do this and i'm just like I don't want you to lead because I don't trust where you've taken me. Hmm. No, mm. that that's very important. You have to understand and trust right. the the leader, especially so men are traditionally supposed to lead the family, lead the wife, mm -hmm. lead lead the, be the leader, right? So if you didn't trust where he was leading you, that is absolutely that could be a big portion of why you guys were bumping bumping heads all the time, and so. Did he ever try to explain where he was leading you, where he was trying to take the family and the relationship? The thing about him is his communication skills suck. Every time I would try to talk to him, it was more like, 
When he heard those dreaded words, let's talk, what can we talk? It was more like he just shut down. <laughs> like, I don't, don't say want that to. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't really express his feelings. Okay. He really couldn't. Um, I don't know. He wasn't very articulate. He couldn't really verbalize what he wanted to say. Now, mind you, the man speaks like seven languages, so I give him a little bit of a pass, but he can't really express himself. I don't know. Um, I can't even really put it into words right now, but he was horrible at letting me know how he felt, mm -hmm. and he didn't really communicate with me how I was making him feel. Yes, I probably in some ways or another like emasculated him. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm not trying to justify it, but me emasculating him wasn't intentional. It was just basically a, um, a reaction to something that he did to me. And it wasn't like I wanted to attack him. It was more so like, hey, if you are really about this, then why didn't you do X, Y, and Z? Why didn't you handle this? Like, why are you waiting till last minute? Why this? Why that? And I guess maybe that could have torn down in a way. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, I recommended like us going to therapy like several times. And he said he would go. He said he would go, but then the day would come and then crickets. So. Oh, something would happen, or would he just not go? Um, it was just crickets. So he wasn't answering, picking up phone. Then. Oh, I see. I see. That's what you mean by crickets. Yeah. The whole disappearing act. Mm hmm Okay. So I'm like, okay, do you either want to face your demons or not? Because I feel like you are projecting your insecurities on me. And two insecure people is a disaster. Mm -hmm. So you projecting your insecurities on me, and they're bouncing off of me and going back to you plus mine, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. So, um, I just felt like, and the thing about it, I feel like he knew what I was capable of. Like, he knew that I had a lot of things that I wanted to pursue, and he knew that I can accomplish those things, because even to, like, the end of it, he was like, I believe you could do this, I believe you could do that, you know. Um, I always believed that you could do it, but it's like, when it came to, like, the time to support, he would just be like, you could do it, you could do it by yourself, so do it. And my thing is, oh, so where? it wasn't no support. Uh uh. It was ver verbal. Verbal. Okay. So okay. my thing is, if you really think I can do it, like, then we're supposed to be a unit and we're trying to come together and build like a solid foundation to potentially get married one day, why wouldn't you support me? And my thing is, if you don't want to do business with me, and I'm not saying like business like in the traditional term, I mean like business as in like a relational type thing, um, then why am I dealing with you? Because. Marriage is business. It's God's yeah, business. It so mm -hmm. if you ain't trying to get in business with that person, then you might as well go off. And uh, um, I think another thing was, at one point in time, I was making more than he was. And I'm not talking about everything accumulative, like with his papers in the military. I mean, like, the base and the uh, thing he was getting for housing. I was making more than him, and he felt some type of way. And I didn't even point that out. His roommate pointed that out to me. And he felt some type of way, and he, he didn't like it. <laughs> so, he didn't like it. <laughs> well, what, what did he say to this? Like, how did you know he didn't like this? What, what did he say? What did he do? All his facial reaction. He didn't say much. His friend, like, we were all together. His friend pointed it out, and he was just like, like, his whole body language said it all. He didn't have to say anything. Mm. So that was one of his insecurities then. That which... was another thing that he really just didn't like. So, what do you think that I should do now that the man is continuously texting me? And I said that he was harassing me, but... Well, I definitely don't think that you should entertain him anymore. Uh, it doesn't matter what he sends to you. Uh, I know that you have him in, in your phone as manipulator. and, and a couple, yeah, yeah, Okay, a couple of things, right? <laughs> but I think that you should find a way to just block him on everything. Because I can't, because if I do, he's going to hit me with something else where I don't know that number and I accidentally answer the phone, and that's happened before. I get that, but you're still, every once in a while, and that's not 100%, but every once in a while you still entertain him, like, with the, with the gift, Jeff, whatever it is that he sent to you, then you're like, okay, is this a threat? 
Well, so, I wanted to know because I'm about to report you. No, I understand that, but my point um, is you're still entertaining him where he feels like, okay, today is not a good day, or today is a good day. Let me just ask her when can we see each other because that's the pattern that you said, right? So that's his pattern, so he knows that eventually he's going to be able to break you down and he mm-hmm. will eventually be able to see you. So. He's breaking me down, not this time. <laughs> So my this this you asked me for my right. opinion. My opinion <laughs> right. is that you just completely block him from as much as possible. And if he does call you or text you from a number that you don't know, you know it's voice phone by now, so you can just hang up the phone. That's true, but then I got and blocked that number. That's and true. Do you want to see how many numbers I already got blocked from this man? So many, I can scroll. <laughs> yeah, I see. I can he is very determined. Him. But then, so um, what are the things that I should do to? Keep myself from meeting another man. That's that's him, but different face, different name, all that. Well, you gotta know exactly who you are. So as long as you know exactly who you are and what you want, and, and I don't know if you've done this before, but on my channel I talk about it a whole lot. When I'm coaching my clients, I talk about it a whole lot, which is to make yourself a deal breakers list because that is at least gonna give you a blueprint. It might not be the you know, the, the all over all that everything that's going to happen, but at least it gives you a blueprint to be able to look at this list whenever you meet the guy. If, and if he's not meeting up to the things that you know that you don't want to deal with, like the excessive text or him being a manipulator, those things that you have already dealt with, you know that that's not something you want to deal with anymore. And then once you start seeing these traits that you don't like or characteristics, you can immediately move on with your life. So I think that making the deal breakers list is going to help you so much when you do start dating a new person. And then, like I said, just knowing exactly who you are. Being comfortable in your skin. Yeah. That's good. So do you think that um, any of this, like, is rooted from, like, perhaps, like, my upbringing or... So do you think that a woman, before they should, before they go into, like, the dating scene, Mm -hmm. that they really should evaluate and know themselves and like spend time with themselves absolutely oh absolutely even if i mean I'm, there are so many women out here who are just so scared of being alone so they'll just get into a relationship with a guy or just just to have a warm body mm-hmm. you don't want to be lonely but really when you're in a relationship you're lonely anyway that's true. You're lonely in the relationship, so you really want to be in a healthy state, in a healthy relationship. In order to do that, you have to be comfortable with being by yourself, being just you and only you. Like, a lot of people complain about or don't want to do, let's say, don't want to go out on dates by themselves. Like, you should take yourself out. You should go to the movies by yourself. I hear a lot of people that don't want to do that. Go on vacations, maybe not necessarily by yourself, but even with girlfriends, just so you can get out and experience life because that's when you actually find a really good person. Number one, you're not looking because you're out just having fun. Number two, and then they actually get to see you in this fun state and they get uh, they, they are immediately attracted to you because you are just being you. But you're also having fun. You're out living life. And that's where a lot of people get mixed up in because they stop living life. They want to, they just want to be in a relationship. So they choose anybody or they let anybody choose them. And they don't have any idea of what they want out of the relationship at all. And so they're, they, they just go in. And I hear a lot of people say, I'm just going to go with the flow. You really cannot just go with the flow in life, especially in a relationship. If you have no idea what you want out of it, that's pretty much what you're going to get out of it. No idea where it's going you're not going to know the types of questions that you should be asking and you're definitely not going to even be asking those questions you're just going to be thinking that he is a mind reader and he should be able to just uh lead you in the, in the best direction when it just doesn't happen that way you have to at least steer him obviously that he is going to be his own man and you're not going to be able to like force him to do anything but if you can at least get an idea of where it's going then you have a better chance to get the type of relationship that you really want so i see a lot of people out here marrying like um just men and for me i feel like um and i think this is a lot of people they can really pinpoint when someone's not really like in love with somebody with everyone else's relationship Mm -hmm. but when it comes to their own they really can't Mm -hmm. you know because they have blinders on do you why do you feel that um that is 
I, I think just really because we're all very close to our own situations and we're all kind of holding it close to our heart and you want your relationship to be really good. Even if you can see, like you said, you can pinpoint everybody else's flaws. They probably need to leave and everything. Even if your relationship is still the same way, you're like, but what is my relationship? And mine isn't that bad. Like, you will find ways to say how yours isn't that bad, even if it is. We all want our relationships to work out because we all don't want to start over. We all, we, you know, that whole starting over, dating somebody new, that getting to know phase, like you said, can't take off your wig, can't take off your makeup, <laughs> right? All of that can be very daunting, and it is a process. It's a long, it, it, none of these things happen overnight. So we all try to hold this, our relationships close to our heart. And, but I, but if I see yours messed up, I can tell you about yours. But I don't, but I don't want you to tell you about mine because mine is good, <laughs> even if it's not. Right. So so yeah, I think that 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 happens with a lot of us, and not just not just you, not just me, just everybody. We can pinpoint everybody else's stuff, but ours, we like no, mine is good. <laughs> no, I when, even when mine is, I don't I don't like to do that. I'd be like, nope, I know mine is trash. Okay, so you gotta tell me because I already know it's trash. But my thing is, I, I don't get why people just, I mean, I guess you already touched on this, like people just no. want to have somebody. But for me, I always said when I get married, I want to just get married one time and one time only. Mm -hmm. I want to get married to my best friend. If you can't make me laugh and we just really have good chemistry and we vibe well, like if we can't just be doing nothing and still be mm -hmm. having fun, like I don't want to spend the rest of my life with you. Why do you think people get in these relationships I mean, get married to somebody that sucked in the real, in the dating phase. Oh, because... <laughs> ladies and gentlemen... Do they believe that it's going to get better? Or? They absolutely believe that it's going to get better. And it, nine times out of ten, it does not. Because, number one, who you date is who you marry. Mm -hmm. So, if you are dating a loser or somebody who is just not giving you anything that you want... That's who you're going to marry. They're going to continue to do and be that same person. Now, there is a small portion of guys and women who go to counseling and they get themselves together. But that is a small percentage of people that get into these horrible relationships. And then on the other side, on the other end, after many years of being in this horrible relationship, does it actually turn out for the good or for the better? Most of the time, they end up just sucking, and then we're divorced after divorce after divorce after divorce. We can't get it together. But a, really, a lot of that, honestly, a, a lot of that has to do with you yourself. Because a, lot, a small percentage of people actually work on themselves. And they, a small percentage of those same people know what they really want, know what they need, and, 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 and are able to express all of this stuff to their partner. It patience 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 relationships is oh my goodness so much patience patience in relationships because you're two different people trying to come together and mesh and meld into this one world to make it cohesive you're trying to build up um, build up and bring up children and it can be very tough especially if only one person is willing to work on the relationship yeah if both people are working on a relationship absolutely it can work out if both people really think and understand how important relationships are because we're really not here on earth to work right you're really on earth Child. to mm -hmm. spread the gospel if you really want to be real you're really here on earth just to spread the gospel god's gospel and mm -hmm. build up your relationships that that's what you're here on earth for so it's not good for no, no, it's, it's really not. And it's really getting into any relationship, especially toxic relationship, can really break a person down. And you're, you're, you're tearing down your self-esteem all over the place. And then you're having to start all over. But you're never really starting all over because... It's like you're picking up where you left off but with a new person. With a new person. But it's the exact same toxicity that mm -hmm. you bring it into the next relationship because you never handle what you needed to handle the very first time you were scared to be alone or just didn't want to be alone. So it's the first person that was willing to come over and tell you that you are beautiful. You really suck in everything that this person is saying, not really realizing who's in front of your face. Yeah. And I feel like if you don't believe, and that's another thing, a lot of people feed off of other people's compliments when it's like, if you 
And that's the thing, because you're starving from... Ah, great word. Starving. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> that was that was a great word. Starving, yes. <laughs> you're starving from, like, those emotions and those feelings that you get when they feed you those words. Mm-hmm. And, the, and that all stems from, basically, from my point of view, is from you not loving yourself. Mm-hmm. If somebody can be like, you're beautiful, and you're like, oh. So, on my last thing that oh. I wanted to ask. <laughs> the last question, okay. <laughs> the last question I wanted to ask was, how do you feel about online dating? <laughs> <laughs> um, online dating. I actually, I, I talk about online dating in a few of the videos that I have, but... Personally, I believe in online dating. <laughs> and wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so, so I met my fiance online, and actually, the website I'll just say because I don't care. Plenty of fish, which most people, most people think. Uh, let's just say it has a, a negative. <laughs> yes, it does. Um, it does. A lot of negative reviews from there. People think plenty of fish is sort of on the same level. It's like Tinder. But the funny part about it is I was on Plenty of Fish. So I've done online dating for, let me say, let me see, at least 10 years. And the reason why, but on and on and off, not 100% always on because that gets tiring. So too. did you get, did you just set your profile and left it and just? No, I would take it off. Oh, okay. I would take it off and then redo the whole thing, maybe a few months, maybe even a year. So it wasn't, it was on and off, like I said, for like 10 years. So I was married one time. I got a divorce. And then after maybe like four or five years of trying to figure out me and all of this stuff, why that didn't work out, you know, my grieving period it was about four years. I jumped back into the dating scene and that was, that's a different, that's a, wait, that's a different video right there. <laughs> that's a different video. But, um, I was on and off, not just plenty of fish, black people meet, match. I was on and off all of them. Is black people right? meet free? No. No. Oh. So I paid for some, but Plenty of Fish actually is a free one. I was on okay, cute Girl, I was on so many online dating sites. She's an online dating guru, <laughs> child. You and need just, to help hit up look, her. Seriously, off and on and, and put my profile up and all of this stuff. Well, long story short, I just was tired. And I gave myself a year and a half break. Now, this is before I actually am engaged now. But before I met my fiance, I was on a year and a half break. No sex. I was, I was just so done. I was so over everything. And um, two or three different ladies actually had met their men a few of them had gotten married but on plenty of fish mm-hmm. and i was like well maybe i'll give it a try one more time and literally when i say one more time i was like i'm i'm believing i'm really going off of their faith because they just met somebody that was good mm-hmm. so i'm like oh boy okay i get back on there and uh <laughs> it was actually really it was really good because i wasn't even on there maybe two months if that and him and I talked for a few weeks back and forth just online, and then we decided to meet up. Of course, he was talking to other people, and mine was iffy, you know, kind of talking to people, but not really. Right. And uh, he was the most consistent one, but I still wasn't just saying, like, let me go gun ho for no, him. Cause, all yeah, that. yeah, no, no, no. I was just like, let me just see. Okay. I kind of was like, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm a go. <laughs> Even though I know that your energy is supposed to be more up, but I was just like, I'm a go. Because the past experiences was still in my head. Like, oh, they didn't work out. They didn't work out. So I'm, I'm just like, I'm just like everybody else, right? But I went out and I actually didn't even think the guy even liked me much because we had a good date. But it wasn't like the butterflies all right. in my stomach and everything. I just felt like it was a good date. But at the end of it, he was like, when can I see you again? And long story short, he just was very consistent. He was very open. He was actually vulnerable to me. And I was just completely different from so many men. I right? met a man recently like that, too. And yeah. it was so shocking. I'm yeah. like, wait, show me all your, <laughs> everything, like, everything on my hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he's, he's giving it to me in pieces. I will say that. But, <laughs> but but he was at least giving it to me. And that's just very different from any of the guys that I have ever experienced with. Because getting in, any information out of men just seems like you're just pulling teeth. You're pulling teeth. And that's not just, that's not a black thing. It's not a white thing. It's men, period. For the most part, I've talked to so many ethnicities it's of men. women. It's just men, Possibly. period. Yeah. That you just feel like. They don't really express and communicate the way that we can. So 
it's there they and, and then also let me just also th throw this in there and say that they actually feel um less than a man when they start to be vulnerable or even if they have a a tear or they're feeling like they need to cry and literally be really vulnerable in that moment they feel weak as men so they don't do it and and of course they're also taught to man up don't cry be a you know be a big boys don't cry and all of this stuff right that we're actually even feeding into them as as children and growing up but that's a, that's a different video too but all of that is to say let me wrap this up all of that is to say i met him pretty much the rest is history we're dating 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 and then um <laughs> Soon after, I'm not going to lie, soon after we found out we was pregnant. Because <laughs> we did wait a little while, but it, but it was a little while. <laughs> hey, we waited God, a little while. Yeah, yeah, it was a little while. Um, oh like God. six, seven, six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. So it was like a month and a half to two months before we actually had a sex. And lo and behold, honey, we got pregnant. <laughs> the first time. The first time, Booski. <laughs> super spring. Yeah, super spring. Well, well, you know what? Yeah. The beauty in it, in all of this was I had was over a I was a year and a half where like I said no sex enough and then when him and I would have conversations I found out he was a year so yeah. he was waiting I was waiting That's right. yeah and then like you said super <laughs> he was potent by this time right. was building it up. Yeah. he was so potent. all his kids just waiting and waiting in the right way like, there you go and uh, anyway so. That's still not a guarantee. I will say that even when I was pregnant and people found like I was starting to share my story that we got pregnant the first time, they were like, whoa, he a good dude. He stayed, he stayed around. Like, and um, of course, of course, I tell him, you know, that that was very honorable, but we're actually still building the relationship. Right. I always made it. Um, open to him. Of course, I don't want to be a single parent, right? But I don't want him to just stay just for the child right. because that's not a healthy relationship either. And so many people do that. And I just didn't want to do that to my daughter. Now now we had it by now. But um, so I didn't want to do that to her. I really wanted us to still build the relationship. So throughout the pregnancy, we weren't living together or anything. We were still dating. We were still trying to get to know one another. And um, even when I tell that portion of it, like, wait a minute, what? So y'all really no, we we really I want I made it a point to say, hey, we still need to date. We right. still need to see if we actually like one another mm -hmm. because just because we having a child don't mean I like you. <laughs> Stand <laughs> and, up for all the ladies and I mean, the men watching. Me seriously, just because we got, you can get no. mm -hmm. Mm -mm. That, uh -huh. that don't mean I like you. That don't right. mean that I like you. Yes, mm -hmm. we we were in the moment and it was all right and everything fell in the place. Everything felt good right. at the moment. At <laughs> but the that, that don't mean that I really like you as a person. Right. But for him and I, we really could be in the room, like he was saying. We could be in the room and not saying anything but comfortable. It's that comfortable silence. I don't have to speak to him. Now we do, right? But I don't have to sit there every moment us having to have a conversation. We could sit in the room. He could be doing his thing. I could be doing my thing. But we're here. And then at some point we do come together and, you know, really like cuddle or something like that. But sometimes I don't want to cuddle because I got things to do. And then he's the same way. He got things to do. But we always make time for each other. So, all of that was very long, but just to say that online dating does work. You do have to work it. It's just like any other form of dating. You can't just say, I'm going to go online and choose whoever or let whoever choose me and everything's going to work out. No, it's just like meeting somebody in person. You really have to put in the work. You got to put in the energy and time and make sure. And that's what most people don't want to do. But relationships, they, they do take constant work. Even if it's not work all the time, it does take constant work where you have to build this thing together. And just check in with the relationship and make sure that it's going right. And I, I've tried to make sure that we incorporate that into our own relationship. Yeah. Do you feel like, um, I know I said that was the last question. Okay. But do you feel like people should know, like in a relationship, we should know each other's like love language? Oh, man. Yes. I yes. just found out mine, like, and I'm so, I, I, I think I got a new, like, mine's is quality time, mm -hmm. words of affirmation, and I forgot what the other one, because it was tied with words of affirmation. Physical touch, acts of service, gifts? I think it was acts of service. Like, okay. Gifts? Mm-mm. No. Nah. I mean, <laughs> I know some women like, oh, yeah, he got me this. Right, no. yeah, right. I'd rather you spend time with me, and I'd rather mm -hmm. you open up to me, and I'd rather you help me along the way, that's going to mean more to me than a stupid gift that you bought, like, at the store. Okay, all right. Well, that's what works for you, but yes. Yeah, that, that's just me, but yeah. I'm saying, like, <laughs> I'm saying, like, with 
um, like a man and a woman. Like, and I feel like one of the things was his was physical touch, and since he didn't get all that, ah, mm-hmm. oh, you wasn't loving him the right way. Right, and I didn't know that. Okay, okay. I didn't know that until way after it all sped oh, out. Oh, I like, see. Yes, because yeah, he didn't communicate that. Oh. Yeah, that's true. You said he was horrible to me. But anyway, to answer the question, yes, absolutely understand and know how to love your partner. And mm-hmm. I actually just did, literally, I just did this book review. I re- released it Friday. So literally, I just did this book review on the five love languages by Gary Chapman, which is what you're talking about. Um, I read it. <laughs> yes. I just took the test. I read it. It is a wonderful book. So not only should you know the five love languages, he has sub languages underneath each. And it's just a great way to really understand how to show the, the actual love languages. So like you said, quality time is absolutely mine. And then physical touch is mine as well. I do like gifts, but it's not like, you know, it's not one of the top ones for me. Gifts but if you give lowest. me a gift, the well, well, gifts ain't my lowest. But <laughs> but if you give me a gift, I'm going to be all on top of it. But I, like them, but I really want you to spend some time with me and then give me some quality, uh, um, some, some physical touch. And, and oddly enough, you usually don't find your partner that has the exact same one as you. Oddly enough, my guy with yeah. both quality time. So it's really great for us um, as far as quality time goes where we, we're always around each other. But I like that about him. And he likes that about me, obviously. Like we really mesh up and match well for that. Anyway, yes, you should know the five love languages are physical touch, acts of service, um, <laughs> gifts, words of affirmation, and what am I missing? I'm missing quality something. Quality, I, I just said that right. Quality time. You absolutely should know how to love and express your love to your partner. That is actually going to smooth out your relationship so much more. And Christine already said that she didn't realize that she wasn't loving him the right way. And maybe he wasn't loving her the right way either. And and that's the beauty in these relationships. You actually are growing and you are knowing who you are and what you want. And sometimes you just have to go through these things. So don't beat yourself up. Over this toxic relationship and that it went on for so long, whatever, because it's over with now. Right. And you have the opportunity to really rebuild yourself and rebuild your life. And that way, the next guy that comes along will not be able to do any of this stuff to you. And it definitely will not uh, be prolonged like this, especially if you Mm -hmm. notice some of these red flags. That is a long time. And then his thing, his favorite thing to say was, we're going to have two, three kids one night and be married and happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. But y'all wouldn't have been happy if y'all never learned each other. We've never language. been happy according to him because there was a ghost following me the whole time, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Marshawn. I love me, me, me for helping me Thank and you. helping everyone else. <laughs> So we're going to go look up the five love languages so you can figure out what are yours. And then when you do get a man or if you have a man, you need to have him go take the test too so you can learn how to love him as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thank you guys for joining me. I know my story was a little chopped and screwed. Child, if I told you the whole thing, it would take days. So you don't really want to hear that. (laughs) It was just a hot mess. So thank you guys for listening and joining in. And I will see you guys next time. All right. All right, family, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that you guys have learned something and as well enjoyed Christina's story. I'm sure that some of you guys out there can relate. And so the things that you can relate with, absolutely throw them out the window. (laughs) Throw them in the trash. Throw them out the window. Super (laughs) trash garbage. (laughs) <laughs> I hope that honestly I hope that you guys have learned something from this video and absolutely from her story and if you can relate to what's going on with her absolutely try to take my advice or get the advice of somebody else that can absolutely help you out thank you so, <laughs> thank you so much Christina for coming and sharing your story no of problem. course definitely check out her page at Christina Gold <laughs> absolutely check out her page and I will see you again tomorrow deuces bye